Hi, everyone. This is John Carlini, and welcome to the debut of my podcast from The Vault. What's The Vault? The Vault is my personal musical library where I've been collecting audio throughout my career. And now's the time for me to share this unique collection with you. There's enough material here to keep our ears busy for a long, long time. So sit back, enjoy, and welcome to The Vault.
was an original tune called Blues Al Dente, designed to stimulate the appetite. It's from uh, my John Carlini Quartet CD called The Games Afoot, and it features some incredible musicians, the quintessential jazz mandolinist on the scene today, Chicago's own Don Stiernberg, the incredible five-string banjo player Pat Cloud, who plays mainstream jazz on the five-string banjo, but still retains the three-finger Scruggs style technique. Don't ask me how he does it. It's a life's work. One of uh, the New York area's finest acoustic bassists, Brian Glassman, and the grooviest acoustic drummer on the planet, Steve Holloway. Next, I'm going to take you back to the year, I would say, 1995, 1996. I told you I've been collecting these things for a long time. This is a portion of an interview that I had an opportunity to do with uh, Bluegrass Radio personality Carol Bogard. And during that interview, we had a surprise phone call from my old friend David Grisman. David laid down some definitive history of the acoustic music scene that I know you're going to dig. So take a listen, and I'll be back after a while. We've got John Carlini in our studios right now. John, I have a whole treasure chest, a package of materials surrounding uh, your work. John has a, an extensive background that I'd like to let the audience in on. You're a guitarist, composer, arranger, and teacher, the orchestrator for the hit off-Broadway musical The Song of Singapore, for which you received the Drama Desk nomination. You're a graduate of the Berklee College of Music and the U.S. Navy School of Music, and you were the featured guitarist on the Grammy-nominated CD released by the David Grisman Quintet, Dog 90. And you performed with that group at Carnegie Hall back in October of 1989. And we didn't tell you about this, John, but right now on our phone lines, guess who is here? David Grisman. Good morning, David. How you doing? Great to have you with us. Good to be here. How you doing there, John? David, great to hear your voice, man. <laughs> How are you? I can't hear his voice. but You can't hear you his can't? voice? No, I can barely hear it, but that's okay. <laughs> I just want to know one thing. <laughs> How do you voice a B, B minor 7th flat 5 with a major 7th on top on a mandolin in the key of C minor? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's arranging talk. <laughs> David, why don't you tell us how you first uh, got together with John? Well, yeah, I'm from New Jersey, too. And yeah, I think we met a long time ago through a mutual friend, Tex Logan. or We were both in the bluegrass milieu in the early 60s the uh, you know young urban kids trying to learn bluegrass music and uh, I think I I, I might have met John through Bill Keith the banjo player and then uh, oh about 10 years after that I ran into John in San Francisco where he was uh, playing I believe with the show Grease and and he had a couple of weeks off there because of the San Francisco Musicians Union and uh, I had just uh, was forming a band with Richard Green, the violin player, to play some original uh, music that wasn't no longer bluegrass. And uh, meeting John was just like a, meeting a soulmate. In fact, he, he started writing out some of my tunes, which I, I was kind of inept at doing that. I was writing these tunes, and, and John, uh, he knew more about them than I did. So we started hanging out, and... Uh, I hired him to be in this band, the Great American Music Band, with Richard Green, and we did that for, uh, oh, I guess close to a, a year. And uh, that was the start of uh, many collaborations that we've continued uh, through the years. Uh, he's done a lot of arranging for my band. He he arranged a, a, a piece uh, called Mondo Mando that I recorded on the album of the same name and uh, uh, worked with me on the music for King of the Gypsies, did a, a lot of writing for that, and uh, he's uh, a, one of my kindred spirits and a, a good friend and uh, somebody whose musical taste I, I always uh, agree with. John is just a, a recent acquaintance of mine, somebody I've just discovered, and I'm like, wow, he is the best kept secret in New Jersey. <laughs> right. Well, he's, he's quiet, see? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get him to be more aggressive, more, you know, look at me. Tell but me he's playing an aggressive instrument now. <laughs> yes. That's the right. Banjo. Yes. And David, I don't know if you're aware or not, but Tony Rice is going to join us on the phone a little bit later That's in the program. That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about how Tony came along and how you uh, got John to help Tony out with the arranging and everything for, for us? Well, I met Tony around 1975. 
uh, at a recording session for uh, one of Bill Keith's albums, and he was real interested in the music that I was writing and um, started calling me up. Uh, he was playing with J.D. Crow in the New South at the time, and uh, I guess it was time for him to explore some things that he'd been interested in but never met anybody that out of the bluegrass world that uh, was into more jazz-like uh, tunes. And uh, he kept calling me up and ultimately joined my band, uh, moved out to California. And uh, John would, uh, I believe John was with the Ice Capade, which he was with for many years, and he, he would find himself out in San Francisco every once in a while, and he would come over and help us at our rehearsals. And he spent a lot of time with Tony on, I guess, uh, guitar-related stuff. And uh, we were all kindred spirits of one one kind or another. Uh, so we uh, we got involved in my music, you know, which was great for me because, uh, uh, you know, I had a great gu guitar player and a great coach for that great guitar player. And uh, it was an educational experience for everybody. Did you see this month's issue of Acoustic Guitar Magazine, the article on Tony Rice? I'm not sure if I have seen that. I'll send you a copy, David. It uh, fills in a lot of that history. Yeah, that was a great time, and um, I seem to remember every time I left the room, I left it filled up with paper, you know, constantly um, scribbling out your, your compositional efforts and parts, and it was a great, great experience and a great time. And I'm well, real proud of that time. I think that you all should be. You know, usually I ask musicians about each other, and I don't get the chance to ask in front of the other person, so it's almost like talking behind their back. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, David is on the well, phone. I can't hear what he's saying, so he, oh, he can get bad. away with just about anything. Gee, I, I'm really, s well, well, we'll have to do something about that. But, John, why don't you tell us, as long as David's on the line, um, you know, your impression of David Grisman and really what it was like for you to work with him. It was a treat. It was um, a constant challenge. It seemed like David was always cranking out new compositions and handing them to me. And I would take those compositions and um, get into the, uh, the harmonic implications of them, I guess is what I was exploring, and get the other band members to uh, play those harmonic implications. And I think it uh, produced a kind of a unique form, which started with the original David Grisman quintet recording. So working with David has, was and always is a challenge it seems like once we put our heads together and uh, start working on a project, new ground is continually being uncovered. Did you hear that, David? I, I'm sorry. I, I can't hear a word. I just, I can't believe that. Well, we're we're going to have to correct you that. You have to send me a tape. Yes, we will send you a tape. <laughs> he was saying very nice things about you, David. Very, very nice things. And we oh, hey, well, I'd say the same thing about him if I wanted to be as big a liar as him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. Um, hey. I look at John as, uh, you know, one of the few people to uh, arrange any of my music because he's, he thinks, you know, he doesn't think like I do because, I mean, but he thinks like I would like to think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of call him my Billy Strayhorn, you know, Duke Ellington. I mean, not that I'm Duke Ellington, but if I was, he'd be Billy Strayhorn. That's a great, great analogy. Great. Well, David... Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry hey, about the bad phone for, conversation. Uh, thanks for tipping me off. Yeah, that was uh, kind of sneaky. I'm huh? sorry. John, you take care of yourself, and we'll, we'll meet in the morning. Oh, you yeah. beat me to the <laughs> punch. <laughs> he understands what that means. He, he and, just... Uh, Tell him I said absolutely. Best of luck with uh, all your endeavors, and maybe I can get a tape of this show to hear what he said about You <laughs> sure can, David. Hey, now you're listening to me, David. Now all you, right. Now hey, I'm on now the now right I... mic. <laughs> Uh, How you doing there? Great, great, great to hear your voice. Yeah, like likewise. And uh, we definitely meet in the morning, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Well, say hi to T Mang. We got to we got to get together. Okay, man. All right. Bye bye. Take bye, care, David. Thanks a lot. Sure, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. That was David Grisman, a kind of a special surprise guest here on our interview with John Carlini. And John is our special guest, and we thank David Grisman for being our special phone guest this morning on WFDU FM. And Dog 90 got a, a Grammy nomination in the country category, and it's a really uh, fabulous album that is available on acoustic disc label. We'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, share a track from that CD for you right now on 89.1 WFTU-FM.
Thank you. 
And that was a composition by David Grisman called Lil Samba. It's on the recording by the David Grisman Quintet called Dog 90, uh, recorded during the time when I was the guitarist in the group. I hope you enjoyed that interview, and uh, it was a thrill for me, and I am honored to have been a part of that acoustic and dog music history. There'll be another surprise as that interview continues on the next installment, and I think if you listen carefully, you already know who that next surprise guest will be. It was a lot of fun putting this program together, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to go back down to the vault now and get material for the next installment. Meanwhile, I hope you visit my website, which is www.johncarlini.com. And please tell your friends to drop by the site and sign the mailing list. And watch your email for announcement of the next installment of The Vault. I'm going to close this debut issue of The Vault with another original called River Sound. Again, I am honored to say that this piece was chosen to open the tribute CD produced by the great Doc Brian Hall and dedicated to the memory of our dear friend Butch Baldessari. The name of the CD is The Road Home. Butch and I shared some wonderful experiences on our musical paths. Till next time, this is John Carlini saying thanks and so long. (laughs) ¶¶ 